Hello, my dear sewing friends. So last time on this channel, if you remember, we were talking about all the different ways that you can hem a woven garment and we discussed each one of them with examples, with the actual demonstration on the sewing machine. So that way you can surely take that tutorial and apply it to any woven garment. Well, today we're going to do exactly the same, but this time we're going to be talking about how to finish the neckline and the armholes of woven garments. And I have four ways that I like to do that on a regular basis, and all four of them you have seen in my sewing and drafting tutorials. So today I would like to dive a little deeper and discuss all four of these ways, when to use, which one to use, and why I love to use them. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, let's talk about technique number one. And I think it would be pretty fair to say that bias tape should probably take that spot as that is a very common way how to finish the neckline and some of the armholes on the woven garments. However, for me, the place number one is actually taken by a rolled or pin hem for the necklines and for the armholes. And yes, you heard that right. And it actually works exceptionally well on softer fabrics, fabrics that are lightweight or lightweight to medium weight that really adapt well to the curves and I have a few really good examples for you guys right over here so that way you can see that in action and of course let's take a look how to create that on the sewing machine as well before we dive into technical stuff let me show you a few examples here you can see how I use this technique not only on the necklines but also on the armholes of the sleeveless tops as well. Of course, not to mention that this is a really great technique how to hem some of your projects as well now, traditionally, the rolled hem done by the sewing machine manually will require three rows of straight stitching. However, there are times when I do only two rows of stitching, and those times are when my fabric is rayon. It's really great and easy to work with, and I just don't see the need of doing three rows of stitching, and I get away with doing just two without a problem. So this is how I do this hem with just two lines of stitching. Now, although this hem is going to end up really, really tiny, in my case, in this tutorial, one eighth of an inch, and of course, you can make it even smaller, but it's really great if you have some extra fabric on your hem, especially if you're working with finer fabrics like silk chiffons and silk-like fabrics, and you will see why in just a few moments. Now, first, I'm going to grab my sample fabric over here, and I'm going to mark a line half an inch away from the edge of the fabric. And I'm working with a heat erasable pen over here, so once I press everything, the line will be gone. A very quick side note right over here. I'm using a heat erasable marker, so that way you can see exactly how am I folding fabric, where am I stitching, and all of the details. When I do my actual sewing, I do not mark anything with heat erasable marker on the neck lines, armholes, or on the hem. Next, we're actually going to fold the fabric right at that line, and we're going to pin it. Once that is done, we're going to make our way to the sewing machine, and we're going to stitch right on the edge of that crease, right on that edge. Once that is done, you're going to grab your scissors and you're going to cut away excess of the fabric. You're going to cut really close to the stitch line, but not past it, leaving a little bit of room after that. So that way it's not that difficult for you to work because the next step is going to be for us to fold it one more time for one eighth of an inch. Once that is done, you can pin it in place. And now we're going to stitch on top of that stitch line that we see as we folded the fabric in one more time. And I'm using here red thread, so hopefully you will see the difference. And that is very easy. From the right side of the fabric, you will see one line of stitching. And on the wrong side of the fabric, you will see one thicker line of stitching because you will have one row of stitches on top of another row of stitches. Now, as I mentioned, traditionally there would be three different rows of stitches on a pinned hem. However, I truly think that this works really well. At least for me, I find it very useful and I do find it very efficient to do just two of these rows of stitches and the hem comes out really nice and neat. 
Now, to apply this technique to necklines or armholes, we're going to do exactly the same steps as we've just completed for this little sample. The only difference is that we're going to do that on the neckline or on the armhole. Here you have two choices. You can either sew your shoulder seams and your side seams first and then do the armholes and the neckline or you can do each piece separately and then sew the side seams and shoulder seams. You can do it both ways and both ways work. Now, if you're sewing the side seams first and shoulder seams first, it is best if you press your seam allowances open as that will minimize the bulk. Now, one of the reasons why I love using pin or rolled hem is because sometimes bias tape is just too heavy. And I do my bias tape sometimes from chiffon when I want that really lightweight finish of a bias tape. But there are instances when even that is tad too heavy. And I love using rolled or pin hem in those situations. Besides, it gives such a tiny little narrow hem and it always looks so beautiful. It does take just a tiny bit of time to master it, but I I promise you, you will love the result. Well, now let's talk about bias tape and how to finish your neckline and some of your armholes with bias tape as well. And I know that sometimes it might feel a little scary to do and to work with bias tape, especially when you're just starting because working with such a little narrow strip of fabric, it's, it's a little delicate, right? However, once you understand what is bias tape, how it works, everything falls into place. So let's take a look at it. Very quickly, let's take a look at what is bias tape. Bias tape is a narrow strip of any width and any length that you need for your particular project that is cut at a 45 degree angle or on the bias. Therefore, bias tape. You can either purchase it at the store or make your own like you see me do on the screen right now. Bias tapes can be single fold or double fold. Pretty much single fold is a flat piece of bias tape and double fold is the same flat piece of bias tape folded in half. You can apply bias tape to the necklines and the armholes of the sleeveless tops and you can also make it either visible or invisible from the right side of the fabric. So today we're going to explore both of these options. Let's start with the option where you can see the bias tape from the right side of the fabric. Now first go ahead and grab your project and today I will be applying exposed bias tape to the armholes of this beautiful little dress that I'm working on for project dress a girl around the world. And my first step is to actually lay it flat and open up the armhole. Now here's the thing, in 95% of the cases I would actually sew the side seams first and then apply the bias tape into the armhole. But because this is for a small child age 3 and I'm sewing these dresses in bulk, applying this single fold bias tape when the side seams are sewn is actually pretty difficult. So this is my decision to do it with side seams sewn after. Now the first step for me is to actually turn it wrong side up and then you grab your piece of bias tape and now we're going to pin it along the opening of the armhole. We're going to pin with the right side down of the bias tape and the wrong side up of the dress that I'm working on. And here you see I'm pinning the bias tape into that crease that we previously created while making the actual bias tape. Now go ahead and pin it all the way around so that way the whole bias tape is attached. And once everything is done, it will look like so. So now that the bias tape is pinned, let's go ahead and go to the sewing machine. Now here, don't forget about back stitching at the beginning and at the end. And with a straight stitch, we're going to sew right into that crease of the bias tape. And by the way, instead of pins, of course, you can also baste it in place if that is the best choice for you. Now, and a lot of times I'm actually not using pins at all since they do slow down the flow of the process but it really is up to you and what makes the best sewing and the most comfortable sewing for you. Now here you see I'm finishing the end of the bias tape and here's a little tip. If you actually make your bias tape a couple of inches longer than the opening that you're putting it into like the armhole or the neckline or anything else, it makes your life a little bit easier so that way you don't have to worry about the beginning and the end and running out of bias tape just in case. Alright, the first step is done. Now this is the right side of the project. This is the wrong side of the project. You see how I'm holding my bias tape and now we're going to fold it over the edge like so and then we're going to pin it 
and after we pin it we're gonna go and head to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch with a straight stitch right on the edge securing the whole bias tape now here you see I'm going to fold it over along the whole edge and opening of the armhole and if needed in the process you can also trim the seam allowances if you feel that at some places they're a little bit thicker than you would like them to be especially on the curves if the seam allowances are slightly smaller it is always a little bit easier to handle the curves now here's an important part when you're applying exposed bias tape you actually don't need to leave seam allowances as we are not creating a seam but instead we are wrapping the edge of our fabric or project in bias tape so we're actually not taking any fabric away all right let's head to the sewing machine and here, just like we did previously, we're going to backstitch at the beginning and at the end. And with a straight stitch, we're going to sew right on the edge of the bias tape. And here is the case where slow and steady definitely wins the race. Take your time, move the fabric with the curves of the armhole or the neckline that you're applying it to. So that way you can really get that nice and crisp stitch line that really goes along the edge of the bias tape. Once all of it is done, it is going to look like so. After this, you're going to sew the side seams and your armhole with exposed bias tape will be done. Now in this case where I'm sewing the armholes or the shoulder seams after applying the bias tape, what you can do to minimize the bulk of the seam where the bias tape is applied, you can actually brush the seam allowance to one side and tack it down with about one inch or half an inch of straight stitch so that way it really lays flat and there's no puckering of the seam. Now this was about how to apply your bias tape to the necklines and armholes in such manner that you can actually see the bias tape from the right side of the fabric so it's an exposed bias tape. Right now let's take a look at this option where you actually can see the bias tape from the right side of the fabric but instead it creates a really clean and nice finish on your garment let's go ahead and grab our project mine is going to be this Reglan blouse and as you can see the neckline over here has not been finished yet we're going to be finishing it with eight millimeters wide bias tape and it will go all the way around our neckline I have already pre-made mine and I have already folded it and pressed as well as you can see as the final width is going to be quite narrow and that is exactly what I want now I actually don't have enough of the length of the bias tape to finish the neckline all in one piece. So here what I'm doing is I'm taking multiple strips of bias tape that I made and I am sewing them together in order to combine them into one long enough piece of bias tape that I can apply for my neckline. Now usually you will see bias tape attached one to another on a diagonal. However, I actually don't prefer doing that. I prefer attaching it straight like you see me do on a screen and then clipping away the excess and also the corners in order to avoid the bulk once we are ready to attach it. Now let's go ahead and take the neckline and we're also going to stay stitch the neckline in order for the neckline to not to stretch as we're going to be working with it. Now I don't always do stay stitching when I'm working on my projects however if I'm working with a really flimsy fabric really lightweight fabric or fabric that stretches out easily as you continue working with it then stay stitching definitely helps. Here I'm doing that on the very edge of the neckline is just a straight stitch all the way around. Next, once that is done, let's go ahead and put your project right side up with front facing you and grab your bias tape. Usually I start attaching bias tape at the center front because we're attaching our bias tape with an open end instead of sewing it in a circle first. So here's the center front, I'm taking my bias tape and I'm starting to pin. We're placing right side of the project with the right side of the bias tape and we're pinning into that little crease. Let's go ahead and pin all the way around and at the center back we're going to leave about two inches unsewn. You will see how we're going to finish bias tape there in just a few moments.
for this next step, what we're going to do is we will tidy up the seam allowances. So all of the unraveled bits, anything that's a little bit uneven, and all of the loose threads. At this step, I'm going to go ahead and snip them so that way everything is nice and neat. For this next step, we need to take care of this little opening that we left unstitched. So you see, here I have two ends of the bias tapes. What we need to do next is we need to connect these two ends of the bias tapes in such manner so that way the bias tape once connected sits very close and flat to the actual neckline. That way when we complete the whole project everything is nice and neat and flat. So go ahead and take the ends of the bias tape and pin them in such manner that everything will be nice and flat. So here you see I'm pinning them together and here I'm also testing to see if it's as snug and flat as it needed to be. Then we're going to sew these two ends together and after that we're also going to complete this little gap so that way it forms one continuous bias tape. So here you see there's a little gap after I attached my bias tape ends and now we're going to open that seam allowance and we will complete that little gap with a straight stitch so that way we have a bias tape attached to the whole neckline. For this next step, this is how it looks from the wrong side of the fabric, this is how it looks from the right side of the fabric and now we want to brush this seam allowance towards the actual bias tape like so and we want to understitch it. So right over here on the very 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 edge of this bias tape we're going to understitch it all the way around. That is going to make sure that the bias tape sits closer to the neckline and doesn't peek out after we complete the entire project. This step actually helps a lot and makes it look a lot neater. Once the understitching is done, it will look like so from the right side of the fabric, you see a row of stitches right over there. From the wrong side of the fabric, it will look like so. And now for the last and final step of this technique, this is what we're going to do. Take your bias tape and flip it to the wrong side of your project. Now on the wrong side of the fabric, we are going to stitch this bias tape down on the very edge of it in order to attach it to the neckline. So right over here, we're going to do a straight stitch right over here. Now you can do that in multiple ways. You can do that from the wrong side of the fabric like I'm doing right now. You see here's the bias tape, I'm flipping it over like so and now we're going to stitch it down or you can do it from the right side of the fabric. And I really find that it depends in the moment of making a particular garment whether I decide to do this final step of this technique from the right side or from the wrong side of the fabric. Now the challenge of doing this from the right side of the fabric is that you don't see the edge of the bias tape. However, as long as you have a nice and neat result and your stitching line is even all the way around the neckline, then I say it really doesn't matter which side you're doing it from. As long as it's convenient for you and gives you the best result possible. And that's it, just make sure that you tidy up all loose threads, clip everything that needs to be clipped, give it a really good press since pressing definitely makes for a crisp result especially when working with areas like necklines and armholes and your beautiful bias tip neckline is done. From the right side of the fabric you're going to see one row of stitching but then from the wrong side of the fabric you're going to see the actual bias tape and two rows of stitching like you see on a screen. Alright, so method number three gives you really, really clean finish. So if you weren't sure about rolled or pinned hem, if you weren't too sure about bias tape, then this would give you a really nice result even if you're a beginner. And that is to create a facing. Now with facing you have a couple of options. You can either create a facing for the neckline, you can create facing for your sleeveless armholes, or you can create all in one facing. So let's take a look how it works, how to draft it if you need to draft one for yourself 
myself and what are the cases where I love to use facing on my woven garments. Now to give you a better understanding of facings and different types of facings, let's go ahead and take a look at this very simple shift dress. As you can see, there's only two pattern pieces, the front and the back. Now this shift dress was drafted for a project dress a girl. So this is for a child ages three. Um, however, the same is going to apply for any type of garment. It's just easier to see a small garment all in one piece on camera. And we're going to be talking about the top part of this garment. Therefore, you will see this part only. Now, facing usually goes around some sort of opening. Here we have the opening for the armhole and opening for the neckline. So two types of openings. However, there's actually three different options of facings that we can create for this garment. So let's go ahead and take a look. First, we have a facing for a neckline. And facing is just a copy of a certain part of this garment or pattern that is meant to face that part in order to create a really beautiful finish of that part of your garment. This is a very clean and neat way how to achieve a beautiful result for your necklines and your armholes. As you can see, this is about one and a half inches, two inches wide, and it copies the opening of the neckline. So that is the facing for the neckline. We can also do exactly the same but for the armhole, again, one and a half, about two inches wide, or depending on your type of project, you might decide on a different dimension. And of course, it copies the opening of the armhole. And the third option is to actually create all in one facing where it's both, it covers the opening of the neckline and the opening of the armhole as well. As you can see, the shape of this one is a little bit different. And in my opinion, it doesn't have to create a wave like this. I've also done facing that end just with a straight line right over here. So as always, there's many ways how to do this or that in sewing. Just find what works for you. So here we have three different options of how we can create a facing for a simple garment like this to create a beautiful finish for the neckline and for the armholes or both at the same time. Now let's go ahead and create the facing for the neckline opening of this beautiful linen top. Now the full tutorial on drafting this top is going to be available in the info box below. However, here I want to mention that you can slightly see the facing through the fabric and that is just due to the fabric that I'm using. If you're using fabric that is not see-through, you don't have to worry about that. Now let's take our front pattern pieces and our back pattern pieces and let's create the facing. As I mentioned before, the facing is just a copy around the opening of that garment. And here I'm doing one and a half inches wide facing around the front neckline and the back neckline. As you can see, I'm outlining. I'm also going to mark the position of the fold and that that is the front facing. I'm going to repeat exactly the same for the back pattern piece. Please note that the position of the fold is also going to be your grain line. You're going to cut one of each from the fabric and one of each from the inner interfacing. The first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to fuse the interfacing to our facing with the bumpy side down and with the heat settings that you have on your interfacing. Now I don't always use interfacing, it just really depends on the fabric and on the project. Now here I'm surging the edges of my facing so that way once everything is attached, everything is nice and neat. Now what we need to do is we need to sew the shoulder seams of the facing pieces and of our garment pieces as well. Once that is done, go ahead and place your facing piece and your garment piece right sides together, matching at the center front, center back, and the side seams. And once everything has been pinned together, let's go ahead and stitch it with a seam allowance that you have on your garment. Go ahead and stitch it with a straight stitch all the way around. Once done, you can either clip or notch or trim the seam allowance depending on what fabric you're using and working with. Now, with the seam allowance pressed towards the facing, let's go ahead and understitch it. So go ahead and understitch all the way around. Now, once the understitching is done, you can see clearly right over here, let's go ahead and turn everything to the wrong side and give it a really good press. That is going to ensure that everything lies really nice and flat and gives us that beautiful final finish. 
Once that is done, I like to use hand stitching to secure the facing to the shoulder seams of my garment, but you can also do that on a sewing machine with a variety of techniques. But in the essence, this is a very simple, basic way of how to create a facing for your garment. Now let's talk about all-in-one facing and here I should say that if you struggle with a clean finish of your necklines and sleeveless armholes then this definitely is a trick for you because this gives a really clean and neat and very easy way how to get all of that done in the best possible way. Now here as you can see I have prepared the front pattern piece for the top and the back pattern piece for the top as well and same goes for the facing. Facing will mimic exactly the pattern pieces up until inch and a half, two inches down the side seam. Again, depending on what kind of garment you're working with and what you intend to do with that garment and how you want it to be finished, you can definitely take more or less depending on, again, what you're working with. Now, as you can see right over here, I have a, a seam down the center back of the back facing. And the only reason for that is because I did not have enough fabric. So I decided to combine two smaller pieces in order to create back pattern pieces for the facing. I have also went ahead and searched the shoulder seams right over here on all pieces, the bottom of the facing right over here, and the side seams on all of the pieces as well. Now let's go ahead and do the first part. First thing that we want to do is, just like we would sew any other top or dress, we want to place these pattern pieces right sides together but we only want to sew the shoulder seams. So let's go ahead and sew the shoulder seams over here and exactly the same thing we're going to do for the facing pieces as well. Once that is done, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to press the seam allowances open. Now in my previous tutorials, you might have seen me do seam allowances together and that always depends on what fabric am I using, what is the garment and a lot of different other factors. But in this case, it really is a good idea if you press your seam allowances open, therefore you either serge them first and then you stitch them with a straight stitch and then you press them open or you stitch them with a straight stitch and then you serge the seam allowances and again you press the seam allowances open. That will greatly minimize the bulk at the seams as we're going to be attaching the main pattern pieces and the facings together. So now we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did when we attached just the facing for the neckline. So we're going to go ahead and open this up and we're going to place the main garment and the facing right sides together and we're going to align them at the neckline. We want to press our seam allowances open and we want to pin everything together and then we want to stitch it. And again, we're going to repeat exactly the same steps. We're gonna stitch it together and then we're going to trim the seam allowances if needed. I'm using narrow seam allowances to begin with, therefore chances are I might not need to trim it at all. And then we're going to understitch it. As you can tell, I have stitched the facing to the neckline opening of the main garment with a straight stitch right over here. The seam allowance is about a quarter of an inch. And I have also tidied up all of the loose threads and threads that I don't need, so that way our neckline is nice and neat. So now, let's go ahead and understitch it. All right, now that that is done, let's go ahead and take a look. Everything has been pressed really well so that way nothing peeks out because once you will understitch this, it's not going to lay flat just yet. So don't forget to give it a really good press. And now comes the most interesting part. Go ahead, take your top and let's lay it like so. There we go, so we're laying it flat. Now we're going to turn it. This is the front, this is the back, and this is what we're going to do next. It's actually really easy and really straightforward. At first, it's going to seem really weird. So just follow the motions of my hands. And once you do it once or twice, you will be a pro at this because this really is that simple. So the first thing that we're going to do is, we're actually going to lay this shoulder right over here flat. So, like so. And it's flat because now the front pattern piece and the back pattern piece of the actual garment is flat and the facing is flat too. Now go ahead and take this shoulder right over here, both the facing and the garment, and lay it inside over here of the other shoulder. So here's the shoulder from the other side. Here's the shoulder that's laying flat. We're taking this, we're placing it inside 
like so. And then we're taking this side of the facing and we are aligning it with the shoulder seam. And let's go ahead and pin it. There we go. Now we're going to align this underarm section, the armhole. There we go. As a result, what do we have? We have one armhole stitched from the side seam all the way to the shoulder seam, from shoulder seam all the way to the side seam, but the other armhole is rolled inside of it, right over here. So that way, once this is stitched, we can actually pull this side out and the armhole that we just stitched is going to come out really nice and neat and flat with all of the seams enclosed. Now, this is how it looks when it's all done. As you can see, this is our armhole. This is the front, this is the back. Now, because I am using narrow seam allowances to begin with, and this is how I sew in general, that I actually don't need to trim the seam allowances and I also don't need to clip it because quarter of an inch seam allowance is going to give you a really nice edge when you turn everything out and nothing is going to pucker. If you are using larger seam allowance, you will need to trim it down or, and you will also need to notch it as well. So definitely, keep that in mind and now let's go ahead and turn this out so as I mentioned before we are going to pull on the other armhole that we sandwiched in the middle so we're pulling on it and as you can see here in a moment this is going to turn out real nice there we go now this is the armhole that we just finished. Of course, we need to press it so that way it actually lays flat. But as you can see, all of the seams are enclosed. There we go. So this will be one armhole. And this is the other armhole that we sandwiched in the middle of this one as we were sewing. So this one is still intact. It is open. So we're actually going to do exactly the same thing as we did to this one. But first, I would like to go ahead and give it a really good press so that way it's a little bit easier for us to work with it later. As you can see, a completely different look, right? So definitely don't skip the pressing part because it definitely makes everything better and easier to work with. Now let's go ahead and repeat exactly the same steps for the other armhole. So what we're going to do is, this is the armhole that we haven't finished yet. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to lay it flat. Again, this is flat, right? The garment part and the part of the facing is flat right over here as well. We're gonna take the other armhole that we did finish. This is the armhole that we did finish. I'm gonna place it right in the middle, right over here. So this is the facing. This is the garment part of the armhole that we did not finish. And we're going to align them at the shoulder seam first. And let's go ahead and pin it. There we go. And just like previously, we're going to stitch from here all the way till here. And again, here it is. This is the armhole. And now we're going to pull on this part. And you can pull from either, either side, this side or this side, whichever way is best. So again, this is the armhole that we just stitched. There we go, all right? And we're going to pull from one of the sides, like so. There we go. And that's it. Again, we need to give it a really good press so that way it all sits nice. And then just a couple of more steps and your beautiful top is going to be ready with all in one facing. Now that everything is nicely pressed, let's go ahead and finish with the side seam. So what we need to do now is go ahead and take your garment, open it up like so. And now what we want to do is take the side seam on the right or the side seams on the left, whichever, but you need to take the same side seam, all right? So now we're going to place garment to garment, facing to facing at the side seam, all right? There we go. We're going to align these seams right over here with seam allowances facing towards the facing. Go ahead and pin it together and then pin the rest of the side seam. And now we're going to stitch from here all the way to the bottom of the side seam. And that's it. Once one side is done, you're going to repeat exactly the same thing on the other side. If you would like to, you can understitch here as well. Sometimes I try to understitch a little bit further up the armhole. Sometimes a little bit like this is enough and you're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side if you would like to. 
And that's it. Give it a really good press and your beautiful top with all-in-one facing is done. And that's how it's going to look like from the right side of your garment. And from the wrong side of your garment, it is going to look like so. Now, sometimes you can also extend that facing and create a full lining using exactly the same technique as you see in the example of this floral cami. Now this last method is probably one of the easiest, if not the easiest, out of all the methods that we've seen today. And I might get some disapproval looks from people just because it really is that simple, that straightforward, and because it is both of these things, it does leave an exposed serger edge on the inside of your garment. However, on the right side, you see really nice and neat finished neckline or armhole. Now I've seen this method used and ready to wear. I've used it myself on numerous occasions and it does have a place to be. Therefore, if you are struggling with finishing your garment or maybe you need a simple finish for whatever reason, this is great. Now on this side, you see it's been finished already. On this side, I have prepared everything for us to finish it together. So first, what we want to do is we want to surge the opening that we're going to be finishing with this technique. As you see right over here, I went ahead and I surged the armhole. You can also do that on the neckline as well. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to fold the armhole to the wrong side of the fabric. So we're going to fold it like so. And then we're going to stitch just about I would say a little bit less than a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the armhole. Now this does take a little bit of precision because you want this stitching to be really nice and neat, just like you see right over here. All right, so this is how it looks. There we go. And when we turn it to the wrong side, you see that the surged edge is folded right as it is to the wrong side. So there's no extra fabric, almost no extra fabric between the surged edge and the actual edge of the armhole. The trick for this armhole and this neckline to lay flat, if you finish it with this technique, is to really stitch just about quarter of an inch from the edge of the armhole or your opening because that's when it's going to lay the flattest against your garment. If you take larger seam, then it's going to pucker and it's going to be really hard for you to get rid of those puckers just because how fabric is going to be manipulated into that seam. So the smaller is this distance between the edge of the armhole and your stitch line and the smaller is this amount of fabric that you're going to be folding to the wrong side, the cleaner this whole technique is going to look. Now this is the armhole that we're going to be finishing together. Now as you can see, I'm actually not even using pins just because it's going to be quite easy for us to fold this part right over here to the wrong side and then stitch it down, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to fold it right over here like so. And if you want, you can also finger press it as well if your fabric allows that. Place it underneath your presser foot and let's go ahead and stitch just about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. Now my seam is usually a little bit less than a quarter of an inch and I actually use the inner opening of the presser foot as my guide for this type of seam. And that's it, let's go ahead and start stitching.
Now usually of course I would backstitch at the beginning and at the end of my stitching. However, if you're doing this for the first time and maybe a couple of first times, I would not backstitch and instead I would tie a knot once everything is done because I would like to make sure that the actual stitching that I just completed is nice and neat and even along the whole armhole. Now of course we need to go ahead and give it a really good press. So let's go ahead and get that done and then we will complete the side seam. There we go. So we have completed stitching on the armhole right over here on this side as well. Everything looks nice and neat. And the last and final step in order to complete the armhole, because right now the side seam isn't sewn, is to place the right sides together at the side seam, pin and then stitch within the seam allowance that you've created your garment. And that's it. After that, you're going to get a really nice and neat armhole, just like you see right over here. And again, you can use exactly the same technique on the neckline as well. Well, dear sewing friends, thank you so much for watching. I truly hope that this was useful. And now you can use this video as a point of reference for all of my other sewing and drafting tutorials. If you want to change something up or you want to experiment or you want to create one of a kind garment for yourself. Now, if you're curious about how to finish hems on your woven garments, then definitely take a look right over here. There's a full video with all of the types of hems that I use on my garments. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.